first, the story of a vast city cave, a sea captain, and the death of a vicar. This is North Bristol, and amazingly, it's the site of one of the oldest, deepest, and most secret caverns, just a few meters below my feet, because here is Penn Park Hole. And Graham and Laura and the rest of the team are gonna take us down there. The first recorded exploration of Penn Park Hole took place more than 300 years ago. In 1669, Captain Samuel Sturmey, who was a retired mariner and the author of a manual on navigation, was the first to plumb the abyss. At the time, there were some great stories about it. In fact, uh, one of the poems written to celebrate his exploration said that he'd met a goblin in the gloomy depths. We're now on the edge of the main chamber. The route we've taken in isn't the route that the original explorers took. Captain Sturmey, the hole that he came in, is up behind the edge up there, right up to the surface. He and his companion were lowered down on ropes, down over these slabs that you can see here, down to the ledge, and then down another 30 or 40 metres below me to the bottom of the, the passage. Whereas we've got extremely strong lights and can see very well what we're doing and where we're going, they would have just had a couple of candles for lighting and would have had no real idea of what was beneath them until they reached the bottom. Four days after his descent, Sturmey developed a bit of a headache, which he attributed to the cave. That turned into a fever and he died. He's buried here in the churchyard of St George's in Easton in Gordano, but here's a nice touch. The locals commemorate the navigator every year on his birthday, the 5th of November, with a ring of the bells. Well, of course, we can never be absolutely sure that Penn Park Hole did contribute to the death of Captain Sturmey, but we can be sure that it caused the death, about a hundred years later, of the Reverend Thomas Newnham. This tree marks the entrance to Penn Park Hole, and in 1775, the Reverend was here measuring the depths, and he had a plumb line in one hand, and he was hanging onto a tree root with the other, and the tree root gave way, and he plummeted to the murky depths 60 metres below. Now, the Reverend Newnham was a junior canon at Bristol Cathedral, and that very morning, he'd been preaching to a congregation in Clifton with these words, I am counted among those who go down the pit. I am like those who have no help, like those forsaken among the dead. You have put me in the depths of the pit, in the regions dark and deep. Your wrath lies heavy. When the Reverend Noonan fell in, he came in the same way as Sturmey did from the top up here. And he would have fallen and slid all the way for about 70 metres in total down to the bottom where his body fell into the lake. And in fact, it was 17 days before the body was found and recovered. And the way in which the body was found was by one of the men who was at the bottom throwing stones into the lake, one of which didn't splash but hit something else. They peered out, realised that what it had hit was the body, got a rope round and dragged it to the shore, and then managed to recover it from there. Penn Park still holds many secrets. The water level of its lake has varied by as much as 30 metres, for no obvious reason. The cave is also very unusual in the way it was formed. Most of the caves that you see are formed by rainwater, obviously falling from the sky and dissolving the rock about below them from, from above. But this was formed by hot water coming up from beneath in much the same way as the Bath Hot Springs are today. Most of the caves that you see are a million, million and a half years old. This, at 250 million years old, is much, much older. You won't see many caves, if any, of this sort of age. Penn Park Hole is vast. For many years, it was the deepest known cave in Britain. It's 60 metres deep in some places and 70 metres wide. 
What's marvellous about this cave isn't just its mode of formation, but its position, being underneath a housing estate on the edge of a big city. It's very unusual to find caves as big as this. I mean, this, this chamber is, what, three quarters the size of the Avon Gorge. But to find one actually underneath a housing estate, with people walking around above, with no real idea of what's under their feet, is, is quite fantastic, really. He's right. It's incredible. You'd never know it up here, would you? Extraordinary.